Kenya, 1970s. It was a thrilling period in East Africa when significant discoveries and advancements occurred in the field of paleoanthropology. The paleoanthropologists of the era were daring, tenacious, and rugged adventurers. Richard Leakey and his crew even rode camels into the outback. Their destination, the shores of Lake Turkana, near the Ethiopian border. This vast desert lake boasts a shoreline longer than Kenya's entire sea coast. In 1972, Richard Leakey and his wife Mead, while on a day trip from their base camp at Kubifora, discovered a complete, beautifully preserved Paranthropus skull in a gully. The paleoanthropology community buzzed with excitement. Archaeologists, geologists, primatologists, and other scientists flocked to the Leakey camp, embarking on a 500 mile trek from Nairobi along half-paved roads. The researchers arrived at the Leakey Camp, fueled by dreams of making a groundbreaking fossil discovery and leaving their mark in the field. Discovery of the Savannah Hominid. Richard Leakey and Hominid Gang leader Kamoya Kamu received the lion's share of attention for the magnificent hominid fossil finds at Turkana. But it was Bernard Ingenio who hit the jackpot. Ingenio, the camp cook, spotted the first fragments of a cranium. These fragments would later be identified as one of the most magnificent and consequential hominid finds in paleoanthropology history. Ingenio, out on a stroll, spotted what looked like antelope bones. He called out to the team members. They scurried to the hillside. The bones were quickly identified as hominid. For the rest of the day, Kamoya's crew raced about. A variety of bone fragments were recovered. But was it an Australopithecine, another Paranthropus, or a prized genus Homo? Leakey's Luck. Lewis and Mary had discovered Paranthropus boisei in 1960 in Olduvai Gorge. Two years later, they discovered Homo habilis. And now, in 1972, their son Richard led the team that discovered another amazing hominid cranium. The father and son had experienced a tumultuous relationship over the years. However, as soon as the cranium was assembled, the younger Leakey flew back to Nairobi to show Lewis the specimen. The elder Leakey was delighted by the discovery and warmly congratulated his son. He deemed the specimen as at the base of genus Homo. Lewis and Mary had discovered Homo habilis in 1963. For the first few weeks, it had seemed that KNMER 1470 was related to Homo habilis. Two weeks after viewing the KNMER 1470 specimen, Lewis Leakey went on a speaking tour in London. He was staying at the home of Jane Goodall's mother, Vanna. After breakfast, he had a massive heart attack. Four hours later, he was dead. Homo Rudolph Fences. From the Leakey Foundation site, KNMER 1470 turned out to be one of the most controversial and enigmatic fossils of all time. Continuing, at the time, it was almost impossible to identify this odd specimen. Smithsonian, originally considered to be Homo habilis, the ways in which Homo rudolfensis differs is in its larger brain case, longer face, 
and larger molar teeth. Some scientists still wonder whether the species might be better considered an Australopithecine. A tight-knit team of top scientists had a hand in piecing together the dozens of fragments of the fossil. They included Mary and Meade Leakey, Bernard Wood, Ronald Clark, Michael Day, and Alan Walker. Walker would later describe it as like fitting together a jigsaw puzzle that was turned upside down. It took three weeks to fit together more than 150 fragments. Tensions were high. Frequent disputes arose regarding the arrangement of particular fragments. Inside the safari tent, Walker and Bernard Wood eventually clashed. During the write-up session for the paper to be published in Nature, Walker abruptly left the room. Leakey nearly fired him on the spot. With a humble demeanor, Walker returned to the tent. At issue was a joining piece for the cranium to the maxilla. Meave and Walker glued a large piece to the cranium which made the facial portion flare out. Richard Leakey, eager to present the first genus homo cranium at a major conference in London, instructed the pair to unglue and reposition its segments. His goal was to enhance the specimen's resemblance to genus Homo and reduce its Australopithecine features. From Walker's account, the face was oriented, quote, in a position that emphasized the large brain and human-like features of the skull. But I thought this was wrong. I wanted to swing the face out at an angle because to me, 1470's large face made it look like a big-brained Australopithecine, end quote, page 119. Continuing, quote, I felt rightly or wrongly that they were trying to squeeze the anatomy to fit their preconceived theory rather than shaping the theory to fit the anatomy, end quote. The paper was published, although Walker's name was omitted from the byline. Instead, it contained a note indicating that some scientists supported classifying KNM ER 1470 in the genus Australopithecine. Quite ironically, later on, Wood changed his perspective. JohnHawks.net, Wood and co-author Mark Collard suggested removing both Havilus and Rudolph fences from Homo and putting them into the genus Australopithecus. Smithsonian. When scientists later dated the skull to 1.9 million years old, the same age as Homo habilis, the scientific community thought KNM ER 1470 must then belong to Homo habilis. But the mandible and teeth just didn't seem to fit within acceptable limits of variation for Homo habilis. Homo rudolfensis, Australopithecine or genus Homo. A team of evolutionary science and anatomy professors from NYU and WITS in South Africa published a paper in 2022 that sparked a great deal of controversy. The authors criticized the Leakeys for their preconceived bias. They proposed that the Leakeys were aiming to maximize exposure in the lay science press while noting that professional literature favored prudence. Timothy Brummage et al., page two. Alan Walker recognized, however, a specific contact between assembled fragments that would lengthen the facial skeleton and make it more protrusive than was otherwise thought by the Kubi-4 team. Key finding, when evaluated on a biological premise, KNM ER 1470 is found to have a more prognathic midface than commonly appreciated. The relationship between facial prognathism and cranial capacity provides an estimate downward. Facial morphology. Definition, metafind. Prognathism is an extension or bulging out of the lower jaw mandible due to the shape of the face bones. 
The human lineage diverged from chimpanzees seven million years ago. Chimpanzees exhibit pronounced prognathism. In contrast, the Australopithecines 4.2 to 1.4 million years ago were significantly more prognathic than the genus Homo. For example, Australopithecus robustus 2 million years ago left. Homo antecessor 1.4 million years ago right. Cranium size reduction. The study's authors also find a reduced brain size in Homo rudolfensis. Continuing, cranial capacity also is estimated downward for the specimen from 752 cc to 700 cc. In Walker's book on page 118, he specifically states an even larger brain size of 755 cc for Homo rudolfensis not 752 cc. Walker describes the brain case as very large indeed, surpassing 670 cc brain size of Homo habilis. Australopithecines brain size is 420 to 550 cc. As established by Louis Leakey, Bill Tobias, and John Napier in the 1960s with the discovery of Homo habilis, brain size for genus Homo should be no less than 600 cc. African Origins OpenMind.com 2017 It was Louis Leakey who managed to convince the scientific community and the world that the cradle of mankind was on the dark continent. Richard Leakey, like his father before him, championed the out of Africa theory. His work sought to bolster the evidence for human evolution originating in Africa. NPR, January 3, 2022, Richard Leakey Obituary. The famed anthropologist has died at 77. His discoveries helped to prove mankind began in Africa. ScienceDaily.com, 2007. Richard Leakey was involved in the reconstruction of Homo rudolfensis. However, his depiction of this early human ancestor as having a vertical facial profile and a relatively large brain was challenged by Dr. Timothy Brummage. Brummage's computer generated reconstruction revealed a 1.9 million year old Homo rudolfensis skull with a surprisingly small brain and a distinctly protruding jaw. Features more akin to ape-like hominids. Husband and wife team Martin Pickford and Brigitte Sanu are the co-discoverers of the 6.1 million year old Orion Tugenensis. The cranium was discovered in Northern Kenya in 1999. Pickford. Leakey changed the reconstruction of 1470 to make it appear more like a human and less like an Australopithecine. Thanks for watching.